Welcome back to the Simicult Network. I am Chris. I'm Matt. And I'm Honto. And we're continuing our Halfway to Halloween featuring Vinegar Syndrome, the boutique Blu-ray label. Uh, we are doing uh, just films that they have released. We did our last episode, Girlfriend from Hell, which turned out to be so delightful. Yes. And uh, it was a movie we hadn't watched since we were kids. It held up. I never seen it before. Yeah. Uh, go check it out. It holds up very well. But this movie is Matt's pick. Matt, what did you pick? I picked another movie I haven't seen since I was a kid. Um, so it's been <laughs> 20 plus years. Okay. I picked Ticks from 1993. Three. 93. Yes. yes. Uh, a movie I had only seen parts of when I was a kid as well. I think we saw it at our grandmother's house, actually. I this think feels, so, too. This feels yes. like it was a USA, like, Sunday afternoon or Saturday evening movie. Like yeah. Monster yeah. Movie. yeah. This movie is disgusting. I do not think so. I don't know why I said it that way. Yeah, I, I do not. I do, I not, do think, not think so. I do not. I do not. <laughs> it's like Bill Murray in the screen. I do not think I, I do not think so. <laughs> he's, he's doing yeah. uh, his Hamlet. <laughs> uh, when he's doing uh, Burton. Um, when he's at the, the, yeah. the homeless shelter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, so this is a Do movie we, we did yeah. not watch together. Where did you watch this, Matt? Where did I watch? I watched it. Tubi. That's right. The future of television. You, dude, Tubi's got some good I, underground I, movies. I will, I will stand by that statement because we watched uh, Savage Streets. Yes. We've seen Angel 2 on there. All these movies. Yeah, I have there's a seen. bunch they just put Let's, on there. Yeah. You're. I on missed there. out yeah. on these fun you're, movies. Dude, you're working, but you're not yeah. on this on this page with us yet. I know. But Tubi is the future of television. <laughs> <laughs> and you hear me in this podcast, I crying, but I am so happy about it. Uh, but no, it there's is some a, hidden gems on there's there. some good yeah. stuff. I was just on there yesterday when I was watching Ticks, and uh, I was like, man, there's all these movies that I would love to watch with uh, the Ponto. boys. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> Just Honto, man. Oh, man. I was like, man, these are some prime Honto and me picks. That bums me out. Yeah, yeah. I read a, there was a four. I one. mean, if we, it, like, there are some YouTube music videos on there, too. Oh, okay, thanks, I wanted well, to do an initiation with you to get you a uh, cool. There, you know? Thanks, guys. <laughs> um, <laughs> <so> <laughs> um, I froze. Okay, so with the Tubi thing, there was even a Reddit forum, and they're talking about how many good hidden gems were on Tubi. Really? Yeah. That's crazy, dude. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, dude, there are, man. There's yeah. a bunch on there. That I, I was like, there's too much to put on my letterbox list to Basically, watch. Basically, every time I scroll, it's like, oh, that would be a good one to watch with the guys. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. Say this, I'll say this one. Yep, yep. yep then right. I, I, yeah. I start watching by myself, and then I'm like, ah, I think this would be better to watch yeah. with the guys. And that's the thing. I don't know what happened, but in the past, like, two, three months, we've all really gotten into cult films. Yeah. And... Uh, hence our name we're starting to kind of cover these cult films and we they're fun to watch and they're oh, fun yeah, to talk yeah. about i don't know why it took so you know so long it's to get uh, into it's like pure entertainment yeah they are man they're fun it's like it, it's a movie that's like it's almost like baffling that they're even they even exist yeah, yeah it's movies that just they don't get made today. No. And if they do get made they're today, they're VOD or like a well, they're U like YouTube movie. Or they're something. like kind of parodies. Yeah. yeah like yeah. you look at something like Sharknado. Yep. Where exactly. it's like, okay, it knows what it is yep. and it's making fun of itself. But there's like these cult movies that are in the 80s and the 90s where it's like you kind of can't tell if like they're 100 percent serious or right. if they they know what they yeah. are and they they're are just making, making fun like of themselves. a B movie. Or yeah. Whatever. yeah. But it's like, like, for instance, Ticks. Let's talk about it. Yeah. Let's do it. Ticks from 1993. What do you think it has on Rotten Tomatoes? Matt, I'll start off with you. Oh, man, this has got to have like a 95%. Okay. Are that, you going to oh, What do you think? 32. All right. Honto. 43. 71%. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> really? Yep. I am not kidding. So, holy moly. <laughs> Spoiler alert for the last movie we just covered was a 13%. I won't say what the movie was. Well, that's going to be released sometime in the future. Yeah. The future of television. But we just did it. one yes. and it yeah. was it was that low. Yeah. yeah. And here we are sitting at a 72%. 71, yes. So 71%, 71%. for ticks. Oh, it went down 1% since we started. <laughs> no, I just told you. If you listen, it's 71%. <laughs> I, thought you, I thought you said 73 and it went to 71. All right. Ticks, so what do you think? 70%. Oh. Matt. Stop. <laughs> what do you think the budget was for Tix Honto? Uh, this one's surprising. If that helps you either way. Okay, because we just did an episode and that was also surprising. Yeah, this one's surprising. So what do you think the budget was? 12 for? million. Okay. 
Matt, six million. One million. Oh, okay. Good wow. for this movie. Okay. Yes. They did a lot. Uh, or, what am I trying to say? For only having a million dollars, they really made use of that. Especially, are especially legit. towards the end. There's an effect towards yeah. the end. I was like, holy moly. Did anybody else get that like itchy feeling on their skin? No. Nope. When, the, when the ticks would run around? And then you like realize there's a tick. Like, oh! <laughs> Have you ever had a tick on your body before? No. no. Oh, I've da- had. That's dangerous. I've had several ticks on my body. Do you have Lyme's disease? Huh? Lyme, you get Lyme's disease. Yeah, you do. If yeah. they, if, uh, it's only if they, if their head gets like, okay, so when you get a tick in your skin. I've uh, seen the movie Ticks. I know. Yeah, how it works. you got, by the way, <laughs> trust the, me. We'll I bring, know. I'll bring that up. That's a side argument I have against this movie. Uh, the, like, their rules about ticks. Okay. Okay. Um, that like they can't be crushed and they can only be burned, but they're crushing the hell out of them throughout the yeah, movie. Yeah, but they get they become enormous. Yeah, it's but that means they're going to be stronger. Their armor is going to be stronger. <laughs> okay, dork. <laughs> <laughs> what a dick, tick dork. <laughs> <laughs> you can suck my tick. Um, but like, uh, no, I, I, yeah, I've gone. I, I, I see what you're saying. Though. I've gone hiking before and I had to pull off like at least like six Man, of them off my legs. Terri- at the, time. the concept of ticks yeah. is terrifying based on the idea of Lyme's disease. Our dog had one one time, and I swear to God, that thing got as fat as a grape. Oh, because it fills up with blood. Yeah, because you can't find it and it gets underneath the fur. Oh, and then all of a sudden, like I thought it was like a mole he had on his on his chest. That th- I got a picture of it. Holy it's in my shit. it's in my palm. But the trick is, what? if you what? <laughs> shut up, <laughs> I got a story. What anyway, it's in my I pulled, palm? It, I pulled it out of. I got what a, does that mean? I have a picture of it that it's like it's sitting in my palm. Oh, I think oh. You're like, you're, I have a picture. It's in my palm. <laughs> <laughs> like, that was weird. so confusing. No, like I have a picture of it sitting in my palm and that's how big it is, but it's like the, no shit the size of a grape. That's nuts. Because it's filled with blood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the trick is when you take out a tick, you have to take out the head because if the head gets stuck underneath your skin, then you can get Lyme disease. I wonder, yeah. It's, that's so you have to get the head out. And that's Ticks 1993. <laughs> uh, thank you for listening. We love doing it. Boy I hope Scout you love Matt. listening to it. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so it costs a million dollars to make. This is a direct-to-video movie, so I do not, unfortunately, I fortunately do not have any box office numbers. So to be fun with it, um, I'm going to ask the question, on a weekly basis, how many viewers <laughs> turned into the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air? Matt, what? I'll start off with you. Oh, <laughs> is this at the, the debut or like the... Just in general, what was the average million viewers that turned into the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air? What's usually good? Matt, what do you think? I don't know. I don't even know. How many? 7.7 7. 7 million. Okay, Hanto was 7.7. Matt, how many viewers turned into Fresh Prince of Bel-Air? 1.5 million. 20 million viewers turned in weekly. That is a wow. hot show. I, was, I, don't, I, was, I don't know yeah, as I was, far as... I was part of the viewer because... I was too. Yeah, I was No, we weren't. Yes, we, we, were. we, we watched, watched it during the dinner. reruns. Nope, that's not true. It was on. It was the reruns. Yeah, we watched it, it was during reruns. dinner. We did not so anyway, watch it when it was being released. Yeah, it's Brothers. in your palm. It's when was it on? What time was it on? Right now eight or nine i don't know <laughs> yeah we watch it during dinner we ate dinner at eight or nine o'clock chris <laughs> getting heated oh man this guy is a jerk like heating a tick to get it off yeah. your body. No, I mean, he's getting heated i mean it's yeah. got a tick you can't step on him you already told us that in the damn movie <laughs> honto you gotta burn him through the cast and crew of tx tx directed by tona randall amityville 1992 it's about time Yep. Hellbound. A movie we talk about all the time. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's coming up all the time. Dude, we always talk about Amityville. Go ahead. Uh, uh, you said Hellbound movie, too? Yeah, that's what the poster was. A movie you will talk about all the time. All the time. <laughs> it's, it's about time. It's about time. <laughs> uh, Hellbound, Hellraiser 2. Um, and then I wrote down... <laughs> it's about time you saw this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That laugh. Matt, that's that's new laugh. laugh. <laughs> 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 Did you like that my hand was? To, I my, saw it. Like it's a, I forgot it's an audio podcast. It's an audio. It's new. <laughs> um, but this is a movie that I seen. I think on probably Sci Fi Channel a lot. Okay. Yeah. Called Children of the Night. Oh, and this is no. a basically. <laughs> I, thought, <laughs> I thought we were talking about ticks. Oh no no. Basically, it's Matt, like follow along, bro. Basically, it's like the quality of ticks, but it's like Salem's Lot. 
I've never heard really? of this. Yeah, this is, I mean, it's the same. Vampire, Children of the Night? Yeah, vampires take over a town and like they have to dispose of vampires. Never heard of it. Basically. I'll put it on my list. But I don't think it's a good movie. I'll take it off my no, list. <laughs> no, we should definitely watch this movie because I'm oh, curious. Oh, it's back about on the list. It. <laughs> it might be on Tubi, the future of television. Children of the Night, check it out. Uh, <laughs> Matt says, check it out. Check it, check it, check it, Hunter, check it, Hunter check says, it. <laughs> maybe or maybe not <laughs> maybe or says maybe. it's a movie <laughs> uh starring seth green as tyler previous episode buffy the vampire slayer in what? an uncredited role apparently i don't remember good callback we talked about this good callback i, I talked remember this yeah i think matt he's one of the this. vampires at the dance at the dance at the end of the movie yep we talked i, about I don't remember yeah, he's one of the few really strange cameos where you're like, oh, that's Seth Green in the background. Oh, that's Ben Affleck in the background. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Future episode. My stepmother is an alien. Continue. Yep, exactly. I really? actually wrote that down. Did you? I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, he <laughs> didn't know he, that was a future so, episode we're going to do? So, look, no, I didn't look. know Seth Green was in the movie. <laughs> look, I didn't know look, we were going to do that. Trivia, pre, <laughs> trivia pre-episode, my stepmother is an alien. He is the love interest of Allison Hannigan. In that movie, no shit, and there are love interests in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. No yeah, shit, show. they're the two children in it. Yeah. No, Allison Hannigan's Hanna- yeah. the daughter of Dan Aykroyd's character. Yeah, I do know Allison yeah. Hannigan's, yeah. and I didn't. Necessarily. Uh, but Seth Airborne Rogen was in it. <laughs> I can't get her Matthew's spots. I was like, yeah, it's a future episode. Matt's like, I didn't know that. And I was like, yep, it's a future episode. It's not um, what I was responding to. <laughs> Airborne, what a dumb show. Airborne. <laughs> oh yeah, Airborne. And Future all three of them, <laughs> Stephen, King, <laughs> Stephen King's it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Then we have Virginia Keene as uh, I guess it's I didn't write her name down, but it's the love interest, I guess, for for Seth Green's character. Yes. Girl that's with him. Yes. It's uh, weird. It goes back and forth between her and the quiet girl. Yeah. And I don't know. You like, think so? Yeah, because I felt like the quiet girl was going to be his Melissa. love interest. It's and, Melissa. And he kept giving her looks and she kept looking back at him. Okay, and yeah. then that, at yeah. a certain point, she started talking. And I was like, okay, here we go. She's sure. going to be the love interest. Okay, I'm with you. And then that's it. Yeah, I'll give you that. Like The Dentist, which we watched. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> yeah. I wasn't a fan of the movie. Yeah, so Matt uh, watched it with a buddy. And best loved knife it. kill ever in a movie. I can't. I sadly don't even remember. Me that and Ronto were not into this movie. Really? Yeah. The part where he kills the boyfriend at the is, pool is the po boy. Yeah, the pool boy. Yeah. That's my favorite knife kill in every any I movie. Sadly, I've ever I don't seen. remember much. I don't remember. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just remember it's, it was like a straight it's, up. It's it the cut shot to like, and everything. I remember it's you simple. recommended us and then like cut to straight up porn in that movie. We we're like, why is this? Yeah, not not. Was that Brian News though? Yeah, it's a Brian Hughes now. We talked about it. Also today. produced this movie. Did he really? Yes, yeah. yes he did. Oh. Yeah. Brian Hughes is our patron saint of cinema culture. <laughs> yeah, he's becoming a patron saint of this, this yeah. podcast. Yes, uh, but she's also in Vader from Mars, which I am curious about visiting because I see that. I feel like I see that that poster everywhere. That's okay. a Toby Hooper one, right? Yeah, that's Toby Hooper. Uh, she's also in Pump Up the Volume, and that's all I wrote for her. Okay. We got Peter Scolari. Scolari. Well, go ahead. Is she the main girl? Pump up the volume. I don't think so. Okay. I I think it's um uh, uh what's her name from Mario Brothers, and yes. um um oh American yeah. Psycho. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I can't remember her name, but she's yeah. in those movies. I always want to call her Claire Danes, but it's not Claire Danes. It is a very yeah. Claire Danes esque yes. uh, actress. Uh, Peter Scolari as Charles Danson, one of the... The, the Scolari brothers? Yeah, Scolari brothers. I gave him the chair! <laughs> uh, he's one of the chaperones on this this trip. R.I.P. He passed away, I think, like, in October 2021. Okay. Uh, Which that, one is he on this trip? He's, he like, the, one of the chaperones. The okay, order. yes. He's the dad of the character I just previously, previously stated. The one they call him out for, and they're like, yeah, you're in there banging, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And he's like, oh! You're banging Holly. Yeah, Holly. And he has, like, no response. He's like, well... You shut your mouth. <laughs> Uh, that you think you, that thing you do, Camp Nowhere, and Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, the TV show. He's playing the Rick Moranis role. I remember wow. him in. I he is their first manager in that thing you do. Yep, uh, and he's in the RV. He is no, no? he no, is a man. TV show host in that 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 movie. No, nope, I bombed that one. Keep I think going. it's when he yeah. goes on on. They go on the live premiere, uh, television. I can't imagine. Oh, that. at the okay. end of the movie. Uh, maybe. Yeah, they're going. T- <laughs> that's like their big, big debut television debut. Yeah, but he's a, he's like okay. a TV show host in that. In okay, that, in that oh, section. Okay, man, I bombed that one. Keep going. Rosalind Allen as Holly, which is the girl that he's banging in this movie. Uh, perfect was tr- uh, John Travolta and Jamie Lee Curtis, the, okay. the workout movie. Yep. Naked Gun, Thirty Three and a Third, and Pinocchio's Revenge. Okay. 
that's another title. That's another VHS I would always see. Who yeah. is she in Naked Gun? Uh, I couldn't tell you. Okay, she's in it. She has a character's name, so that counts. It's not yeah. like it's not like a background character or whatever. Yeah. Speaking of VHS, as you always saw. Did you ever watch the Rumpelstiltskin with Sigourney Weaver? No, yes. so it was Snow White. It was, was Snow, it Snow White. White? It's but Snow there, White. There is a Rumpelstiltskin, yeah. I think. Is there? Okay. Yeah. Man, I saw that VHS cover. That and Fam the Opera were the ones where I was like, what are those the, movies? The yeah. Fam the, <laughs> the Opera with uh, Robert Englund. It's yeah. A Dar isn't it a Dario Argento? I, is it? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Be. I don't know, but I would totally watch that if it was. I'm yeah. going to watch them one day because like I those VHS there's a covers lot, there's like a million times. There's that and there's like... um. Uh, uh, God, what is it? It's like gothic or whatever, and it's like a little little kid. Yes, yeah. yeah. He's like, uh, yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. Crouching yeah. on top of a yep. girl. There's yeah. a lot of like movie. Is that the is gothic the one that's about uh Mary Shelley? Yes. Yeah. yeah with yeah. uh, is what's it? What's his name from Arachnophobia? Yeah. Uh, with uh, the blonde guy from Julian, Warlock. Julian, Julian, from Warlock. Yeah, Warlock. Yeah, yeah, Julian, Julian Sands. Sands. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah. it might be. Yes, I think and, this uh, might be it. Uh, yeah, 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 Ooh, yeah. Oh, this yeah. is so fascinating. Yeah. Okay. There's a lot of like, yeah. there's a lot, like even Waxwork, the cover for that VHS, that's like a lot. There's a lot of VHS like covers that sure. are way back in the day. Troll there's 2, yeah. man. Troll 2 was one I two always also creeped me out. Yeah. Yeah. All the Leprechaun movies. Yep. yep. Uh, I got Amy Dolan's as Dee Dee. She's one of the girls. I think she's the one that's like. The with, Quiet? No, no. No, the, the blonde yeah. that owns a BMW. The one that's yeah. on the cover of this poster? Yeah, she is. She totally is. Yeah. Oh, shit. And you think she's like the main character she's of not. it. She's yeah. not. No. Uh, returning, uh, pairing up with the director again, Children of the Night. <laughs> so, oh. yeah, she's for Children <laughs> of the Night. Pumpkinhead 2 and Witchboard 2, which we talked about, I think, in the last yes. episode. Or one of the actresses. Recently, yes. Was, uh, I have watched Witchboard. Pumpkinhead 2. It's a, a different movie. Um, yeah, it's so. Yeah, uh, it really? mm. I don't. Really, I like the first one. I know Matt doesn't. I don't. It's just so slow. Every time I watch a movie, I forget it. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I I feel like they're the same movie though. One and two. Yeah. Two's got a different vibe. I remember there was a lot of flashbacks. Blood, Blood Wings, I think is like the name of the. Is it what it's <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I I couldn't tell you. I sure. remember it being on uh, USA all the time. Yeah. Um. We have Barry Lynch as Sir, which is like think the the redneck guy, the uh, redneck guy, the guy with the gr the uh, cravat. The, he, he's like missing his teeth, and he's always hitting on the younger teenagers. Oh no, Sir's got to be the one with the cravat because he keeps calling him Sir. Maybe I wrote okay. wrote it down as Sir, but uh, demonic toys, uh, and then uh, I wrote down this movie Night Force with Linda Blair. Okay, and I feel like after falling down the Linda Blair rabbit hole. There might be a lot of gems that we need to really? visit really? of her. Like of repossessed? Her. Yeah, it's actually one. It's actually, it's like, I didn't write it down, but that's actually one that I nice. forgot about. Nice. But like we watched Savage Tree and I was like, what the hell is this movie? Okay. And then there's like Hell Knight, which is on uh, Shudder. I've seen Hell Knight. That's Hell Knight's familiar. like not bad. Okay. It's not bad. Yeah, it's just a weirdly paced movie. Yeah, it's kind of just it's it's slasher film fodder. I feel yeah. like it's nothing yeah. unique she, or different. Um, it's just kinda... She's in a Wes Craven movie called Summer of Fear. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's one of Wes Craven's first movies. Oh, um, TV movie, isn't it? I think so, yes. That's what I wanted to watch. Okay. Yeah. But I also wrote down like Chained Heat, Silent Assassins. It's like these all sound like these great. These sound amazing. Like. <laughs> these are amazing. Yeah, these don't sound great. I feel like uh, there's a Linda Blair month coming up. <laughs> there might be. If we're doing <laughs> this rabbit hole of uh, these movies or whatever. We have um, Rance Howard as the sheriff. Previous episode, Independence Day. Apparently he's. Uh, I can't remember who he is. I think he might be one of the people in the um uh in the White House. Okay. But yeah, it's like I have I, to see it. I, I just don't watched even remember it too. him being okay. there. But he's the father of Clint and Ron Howard. Okay, he is. I saw his really? name popped up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he he typically appears in a lot of um Wait, so this is a father son movie? I mean, Clint Howard's in this, so yeah. Yeah. It would be a father son movie. Wow. Yeah. Uh but Joe Dirt, he's in Joe Dirt. Uh, okay, I couldn't tell you who because I've never seen it. One day, Tales from the Crypt, season six, episode eleven, surprise party. I think those are usually like the weaker. Uh, oh, episodes. surprise party! He's his dad, Jake Busey's dad. Jake Busey's in this episode. Yeah, Jake Busey's in it. Yeah, it's all about um, I think him killing his dad to inherit the get the inheritance. It's with his name from <clears throat> um, the uh, stand. No, I was thinking of what's his name from Lost. No, no, it's what's his name from the stand, Larry Underwood. Who plays Larry oh, Underwood? Oh yes, yes, yes. And he yes. goes to the house that burns down. 
because his dad yes. spoiler alert his no, don't spoil it. i don't remember oh, okay it. don't spoil it because now i'm excited to watch you it tell me off podcast it's an awesome episode. I was thinking the okay. one with um, Locke from Lost. Oh. Uh, Terry O'Quinn? Terry yeah. O'Quinn. Where there's like a fire at the club. Oh. Do you remember that? Yeah, kind of. I don't know if I know this. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember much about it, but there was See, another sort of thing. Back in the day, we would always get to get together and we would watch some tales and crip i feel like season six is one of those seasons that we like always just don't yeah there's some good oh, episodes yeah, back when we were friends outside of the podcast <clears throat> oh yeah because we're only working uh yeah we we're only have a, we're we only have a working buddies yeah, yeah we only have a professional uh relationship That's true. yes um like yeah. a, a hooker and their client <laughs> okay is what Hanto said <laughs> to me last will. night he said we that's what our show is uh, we're gonna change the <laughs> I name. Know what to say. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're gonna change the name to Roxanne. <laughs> <laughs> but he's also sorry not. to the Roxannes out there. <laughs> I, yeah, we're doing a lot of quotations and nobody gets it. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> he's also in the Burbs and he's also in Inner Space. Okay, so okay. he's worked so with. So you got uh, on John Joe John Don, Dante. John Dante. John Dante. <laughs> uh, Afon- Afonso Ribiera as Panic, Fresh Prince of Bel Air. 20 million viewers a week. Yeah. And then he's also the kid in a Michael Jackson infamous Pepsi, uh, Pepsi of a generation. Was he really? He's like the dancer. He's like dancing with uh, Michael Jackson. Do not remember this. Dude, he's like, and he's like seven years old. It's like, oh, do not exactly like him. Off topic, on topic. Uh, He crushed on Dancing with the Stars. I would say uh, Muppets Haunted Mansion and winner of Dancing with the Stars. Dude, he annihilated. He was really good. That's right. I was like, like, holy shit. Yeah, like like, nobody stands a chance, basically. Especially when you have uh, like Bill Nye, the science guy is probably the same. Yeah, or Billy D. Williams, who had like, I think, two hip surgeries at that point. Yeah. Come on. Good for him, though. No, awesome for him. But yeah, it was just kind of like, I was like, ooh, that's going to be tough. You know what else he annihilates in? Ticks. He's probably the best part of this movie. He is awesome in this movie. He, he is. He starts off. It's his, his movie. Yeah. It is. It's kind of his. It starts off and he's very like cliche and it's kind of goofy. But as it goes on, like he's the only one like with character development. Yeah. And you're kind of like, oh, I kind of like this guy. Yeah. He's just a troubled teen. Yeah. Because like, he's kind they, of a nice guy. They call him like Panic. And he's yeah. like, he's like, my name's Panic. because yeah. I never do. And you know, yeah. I was like, oh, it's a very specific name. What if his name was like shit my pants uh, he's like they call me shit my pants because they never have and he's like <laughs> seth green's like okay that's cool <laughs> oh, oh, i wasn't gonna ask but i didn't ask but that's very specific <laughs> i never have yeah we got uh, it man but no i think he is the best part of this movie as he far is as acting characters. his ass off especially when the dog dies and oh like, man that's you know. yeah, yeah did yeah, that yeah. not get you matt when like his dog like passes oh, and he's like yeah, carrying yeah. it yeah, I think he went from like a very stereotypical one dimensional character to actually like developing. Oh, yeah, on, I like Seth Green, but I kind of spoiler. I wish Alfonso would have uh, been the hero of the day. He has yes. more. Of I an, think they should have both been the hero. He has more of an. Yeah, honestly, that yeah, would have been, that been cool. cool. I think they would have done it proving, as like a, a buddy movie. Or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because also spoiler. I hate the fact that he's the only person out of the group that dies. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Finish the cast and crew. Uh, ending with Clint Howard as Jarvis. Yeah, yeah. Clint Howard. Clint Howard. Is, is, he, is he returning guest, to this? Guest host of the episode. The ticks have got me. What does he, he keep saying, by the way, when like they're like, he's like, they infested me. Yeah, they're inside me. <laughs> Which is ironic because the original title of the movie was called Infested. Oh. And okay. I think it even actually came out as Infested. But then I think when it finally hit video stores, it was called Ticks. Okay. Um, Clint Howard, what else has he been in that we've done? Previous episode, Tango and Cash. That's oh. all we've done with Clint Howard? I believe so, we need yes. a We need a Clint well, Howard Well, we, when we do Roger Corman month, we'll do Rock and Roll High School. Yep. Because um, we'll he's he's actually one of the main characters. Those Roger, aren't Roger Corman movies. But go ahead. Yes, they are. Yes, it is. They produced them. That's what Roger Corman's known for. Yeah, but if it's he's like, it's like directed, directed you know what I mean? Like Whatever. It's like a um, Roger Corman executive produced these movies. Whatever. We will or do Roger Corman High School because it's awesome. Um, we just watched him in Ice Cream Man yep. off, off podcast. Yeah, we did. Ice Cream Man. Uh, he's also an evil speak. Silent Night, Deadly Night 5, The Toy Maker, Carnosaur. Oh, in, an ep- in an episode of One Sil- Day. One in Day. A, in an episode of Silk Stockings. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I think Carnosaur is my holy grail. But um, we, didn't we try watching that? You kept building it up. We tried watching it and we're like, oh, we can't get that. No, no. You're, it's your white whale. I it's, haven't seen that movie since no. then. The only copy like, I can find was like a YouTube where it's like really bad to watch. Okay. I don't, I have not been able to find this so movie. VHS like, copies go for how much? Expensive. $400. It's like 50, 60 bucks just oh, for the VHS. But okay. still, would you pay 50 or 60 yeah. bucks for the VHS? If we got the, the 
the group that we usually hang out with, if we all chipped in, we could to watch Carnosaur. Yeah. Well, we'll yeah remember how much you spent on sidekicks a couple weeks ago? Yeah. <laughs> I don't regret it. Yeah, imagine spending fifty dollars on sidekicks. It's imagine called, buying sidekicks ten. It's called times. being dedicated to this podcast. <laughs> oh, is that? I'm willing. You, to, I'm willing to waste my is money. Is that what you told the bank? Should we start a GoFundMe for Carnosaur? Yeah, yeah. I'm in financial ruin right now, but Get it's us worth this it. Movie. Uh, and that's all that's, I have. That's for, it for ticks. That's all that's for, it ticks. for ticks. All right, let's get started. This, this movie is very cookie cutter as far as like there's not a lot of like twists in the plot because basically all it is. You have Clint Howard and it starts off with him and these ticks that are out in, out in this like rural area are being like mixed with like this type of like. Well, OK, I guess so like, he's <laughs> using a certain chemical to grow rapid grow weed. It's yes. like a synthetic like chemical. Or yeah, it's like a steroid like to grow weed. Yes. Right. And a tick gets underneath his like solution. Yes. And it grows really big and then chaos ensues. Which makes sense at the end when Alfonso eats a bunch of the steroids oh. and the thing comes out of his body is because it's a tick that's oh. in his body and he ate all those steroids and then that's why the, the tick is wow. huge. Why did he eat? Oh, because the steroids made it, it was, grow. It was, yeah. no, well, the steroids were his like painkiller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he had the ticks in him. Yeah. And or because so he got shot. He got shot yeah, in the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was eating a bunch of steroids because he got shot. That makes sense. And then a, a tick sense. bit him got in there and That's then insane yeah. what a bizarre Based on a true story <laughs> <laughs> do not jump to the, the end time because... i had a tick <laughs> i do, I do not want to in my palm <laughs> <laughs> i do not want to jump to the best part of the movie um so clint howard ends up dying when all of a sudden he like walks What's in a, a bear trap and oh no he doesn't die he doesn't it's die a, for like 45 minutes oh, right. movie. it's a very prolonged yes death. yeah he's got a very norberg kind of death scene yeah. where he's like walking around and he like steps in a bear truck right. like, oh! the, the, the freshly painted barns like, oh! and he starts <laughs> shooting his, his like leg he's like oh! yeah right <laughs> he's like get it out of me and then we cut to seth green who's dropped off by his father and what we think is like it's weird because we don't know what's going on. He just drops him off in like the middle of the city and he's like, good luck, man. Yeah. We don't know what's going on. Survival of the fittest. Dude, I don't even know. Is this a, I thought these were orphans. So I thought I, so too. Yeah. They're and not. It's weird because he drops off Seth Green kind of it's like, kind of like a survival. Like it's on your own. And it's, we're like, oh, is he it, in a bad part of town? What's going to happen? It's, it's like the equivalent of like the Spartan, like legend of like, they drop a kid in the middle of the forest and give him a sword and figure out how to like, oh yeah, you know, like figure yeah. it out. Sure. Yeah. He kid. suffers from panic disorder. Yes. Yeah. Because he was abandoned as a kid from yeah. his dad, from his dad. Yeah. Yeah. So his, his dad does it again. Happy anniversary. Yeah. Child. <laughs> <laughs> Never forget. Yeah. Um, so you're like, all right, he drops him off. What's going to happen? He's in a bad part of town. What's going to happen? And then all of a sudden we cut to um, Alfonso um, Ribeiro. Yes. And He's probably the best shot of the movie. Playing basketball? Um, no, because the best shot of the movie, and I don't know if Matt laughed at this. Yeah, I was waiting for this. Because his introduction is him like a mile down the road. And he's like standing like between pillars <laughs> and like his trench coat is like blown in the wind. It is such a great introduction yeah. to this character. And then he shows up and he was like, let's play basketball. And he's super tough. We don't have any. We have no idea what's going on in this movie. Because he's like, yeah, he's like something like if you make it, I'll leave you alone or whatever. And he's like, like, you like, miss. He's like, yeah. make it again. He's like, I was watching. Yeah. Make it again. And then also this van shows up, picks up Seth Green to go to this camp. And then uh, Alfonso gets on as well. He's like, oh, it's just panic. You know? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. No. And you're like, OK, maybe it's not as hard as we're supposed to leave. Yeah. yeah. And then. This dude, this girlfriend just show up and in they just BMW. Yeah. And they just leave the car there and get in the van. They don't even put the hood up. It's yeah. Just like, they just totally hop into a, this van. Yeah. There's a lot of weird stuff like this where it's like, why can't they just drive out to the wilderness? Why are they driving a BMW? How why old are, are these kids? Yeah. Like, who, yeah. who are they? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Who are they? And what program is this? Yeah, what? What is this? That's they go into the wild yeah. and make hamburgers. Yeah. Like. And what the, is, what's the, the goal the, here? And the chaperones are just like fudging, yeah, uh, and not chaperoning. Okay. Here, here's here's a good way, a better way to set this movie up. And there's only like six of them. Yeah, it's a, it's a yeah. very small. And movie. one of them's a daughter, so she doesn't count. So yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. There's four. Or there's only five of them. No, no, no there's That'd six. Be, of them. It'd be four. Be, there's six of them, and yeah. only five of them are like strangers that are like, why are they yeah. a part of this program? Yeah. Why is this girl with the BMW a part of this program? Right. Like, yeah. 
So here's here's how I make it a little bit better. Not to reference this movie again in a row, but Nightmare on Elm Street 6, Freddy's Dead. Okay. We have like this like um whatever you want to call it not like a halfway home but like it's like a yeah yeah it, it kind of is kind of like in freddy's dead where it's all these kids where they like, trouble you know, troubled yeah nuts. yeah and then you have someone who's like hey all right we're gonna do this camping trip let's get them together and you're like at this established area so we know where these kids are coming from and then they take these kids to the cabin it's like one big group at uh exercise if you will yeah yeah i think that would be a better setup for this movie yeah personally yeah because i don't i don't know what the goal is i don't understand what the goal I don't is either. until the guy starts speaking into his tape recorder and he's like, oh, yeah, he's like, he's like, there's no hope for these kids. Yeah, it's like it's like it's like the introduction of Batman. It's like, uh, like I'm doing this for nothing. Oh, I thought you were going to say it was like Linda Hamilton in Terminator 2. Oh, oh. Where it's like Judgment Day was coming. Judgment Day. I saw him with the machine. No, nothing can prevent it. Yeah, like uh, it's so just like he's like smoking. He's like he's like, he's like, or, uh, he's like Linda Hamilton smoking the cigarette. Like, uh, it's all a fucking waste. His of hair is in a ponytail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, they finally get to the campsite. And I'm not kidding. I'm not saying this in a bad way, but the next like 60 minutes of this movie it's really, is pretty straightforward. It's yeah. like a tick attacks this, yeah. a giant tick, a giant tick attacks this person, a giant tick attacks well, that it, person. The, the first introduction of the tick, other than the Clint Howard, is the like, closet. Yeah, it's like Seth Green like putting away his clothes and he sees like the bug. And he's like, what is And he this? pokes it with a stick. Oh my what? God, this what is this. And he's like, squish. Squish, squish, you know? <laughs> if i saw something this massive Dude, in a closet this thing is, i would freak this my, thing is yeah this thing is nasty like there's one part where the blonde girl yeah with the bmw is in clint howard's uh oh yeah yeah farm, farm barn yeah. yeah barn or whatever yeah, yeah. and she, she puts her face like maybe three <laughs> inches away from one of these <laughs> things does. just to look at what it is and i was like dude i wouldn't even go near that like yeah. the idea that fact or the fact that like no one like is putting any kind of logic into this. Like, hey, like at one point they're like, "What do you think this thing is?" And I'm like, "Guys, it is a giant I don't know, egg, but it's on, nasty." Yeah, it's nasty. It's leaking like tar. Yeah, like uh, it's leaking. Uh, uh, like it, 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 it's, it's just, it's huge. It's these, just gross. These, and it's all, like, why would you not be like running or like? All, all of these characters basically have that, um, that like fascination of watching like the people popping stuff on youtube yes and they like want to do it themselves basically yeah like you're not wrong squish squish like yeah they are they they are stoking the fire they want this to to explode in their face dude if i ever see spider eggs that are like the size oh, of oh, like a dude, 25 dude, cent piece nasty i like won't nasty. even go near it i guess like, that's too big yeah that's just too big even if it's just yeah. one egg i'm like nope not i get i get a, a hair my like for my my hair yeah, yeah. Yeah, like a spray can. <laughs> Spoiler, there's no hair. And then a lighter and I burn it. There you go. And then you wet the bed. And then I wet the bed. Yeah. But yeah, like uh, at some point, Seth Rogen's walking around with the, Green. the daughter. Seth Rogen. Seth Rogen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was jerks. <laughs> oh, that was horrible. <laughs> oh no, join ticks. That wasn't bad. No, that, no, was, that was really bad. That was bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Seth Green is in the forest with a girl. Yeah. And then she's got, got on her back. And Seth Green is just kind of like, oh, let me get that. And he's, well, like, he's like, let me get that off your body. They do the, and it's like yeah. very chill. They, and it's like, they do, I'm they, freaking they, out. They do the typical like, oh, no, you got something back. You're like, ah, oh, you're just messing with me. He's like, right. oh, really? You do? And then, yeah. yeah. But it's this is stupid because like, it's like, dude, that thing's the size of like a baby. It is. <laughs> and it's on your back. And then when they run up to tell the like the uh, the, the camp instructor or whatever the hell this guy's We're job. We're in the, the woods. Yeah. They're like, there was a bug on her. I was like, dude, show him the shirt. Yeah. Like, all you gotta do is turn around and show him, like, yeah, he literally, like, the bug has claw marks here, it yeah. bit here. It bit, yes. Yeah. It's big and enough. He pulls, he pulls Seth, Seth Green off to the side. He's like, look, look, I'm here to um have sex with Holly, so don't don't mess this up for me. Yeah, this is right. also our honeymoon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're married. <laughs> <laughs> the way I can get it paid is <laughs> these <laughs> kids. <laughs> <laughs> what a sad story. <laughs> um, but yeah, we have, like, these, like, run-ins with... It's weird because it's like a slasher movie with no deaths. No, yeah. Not, um, it doesn't yeah. really get crazy until the end. Yeah. yeah. Uh, two people that die, Clint Howard and the cop, yes. and the cop dies off screen. Doesn't Clint Howard end up well, shooting himself? Is well, that correct? Uh, yeah. No, his... No. 
I think he dies from. No, he dies before he can't shoot himself. I think. Oh yeah. yes, that's exactly what happened. But right the here. sheriff dies because he gets murdered. He, yeah, he gets get, murdered he off get screen. Yeah, who does he get murdered by? He the drug dealers. The drug. The the two guys that are at the end. Remember? The, yeah. Or, okay, uh, right. They're not really dealers. They're like drug farmers. Oh yeah. Yeah. There's the, yeah these two like random characters that are kind of a part so of it. So I think the guy that's like the. I could not tell if he was like English or what yes. accent the hell yeah. accent he was using, but I think he's supposed to be like the owner of this farm or whatever. Yeah. And then his Clint Howard's the the grower, mm-hmm. and the hick is like his henchman or yes. his bodyguard or yeah. whatever. You want uh, they show up a few times throughout the movie, just kind of like hey, yeah. we're here. Yeah. And that hick is like being real creepy to some teenagers. Yes, this like, is true. This is very true um but yeah we just it's basically just like run-ins with these ticks yep um and then alfonso's dog gets attacked by a tick this is heartbreaking we have a heartbreaking yes, scene of him sad. like walking with his dog is it is it's very hard i think it's i think it's it's uh it helps that he's giving his giving it his all with the acting yeah because if it was any any other type of acting i sure. would have bought this but yeah like he's crying and he's like why'd it have to be i totally buy it honestly yeah. and this whatever. is one of those things that like with movies like this this is where you need your actors to give a hundred percent sure yeah. because when they give a hundred percent it's it's more enjoyable to watch if they know they're making shit and they pretend yeah, that they're making then it's shit, obvious then it's obvious yeah. it's not fun it's like oh you're not even trying yeah, yeah. like brutus I, is the dog by the way brutus yeah guy. yeah um, but Alfonso gets back to the the cabin. He's upset. They take the dog to a vet. Yeah. Find out about the ticks. And this is like the first, I think the first like attack on where uh, Peter Scolari, who's like the, the camp dad or whatever, like the yeah. chaperone. This is where he's like, oh, yeah, this is real. Like, yes. yeah, because before this, Seth Green's like yeah. warning him and like he's like, get out of my way, stupid kid. Oh, yeah. oh you know what? We we completely passed over though too is like how they kill the ticks oh yeah yeah uh we have a little scene where alfonso's got like a little like a legit tick on his body yeah, yeah. or on his dog yeah yeah and seth green takes it out and he wraps it in a paper towel and he's like yeah they're really hard to kill so you gotta light them in fire and he lights a napkin on fire and then it blows up and blood blows up all over him. <laughs> this is true uh but then like throughout the rest of the movie they're like stepping on these things yeah, squash, just their heel. Yes, squishing basically. yeah because they were i thought they were supposed to be so hard to kill that you couldn't that's a good point the continuity is kind of they yeah. Yeah. you made these rules up and then you don't follow the rules but also that's like if point. you would have kept with your rule this movie would be more terrifying knowing you couldn't step on these things sure. it'd be yeah. super rad if it was like an assault in precinct 13 where they're like storming the cabin or whatever yeah they have like guns and they're shooting it's like ricocheting yeah Bing. yeah you there's nothing you do the, and all yeah. of a sudden there's taking axes to these and ticks to get the flamethrower using the hairspray that uh one of the people bought. sure then, i think yeah. that sounds cool yeah. yeah it's a shame that they like they literally set up these rules and they throw out the rules out the window I will agree immediately that, yeah. uh but speaking of alfonso um, he ends up taking off. He's done. He yeah. Does not I think be a he decides to like. Anymore. Yeah, I think he decides he's like. I gotta go back to the city. He's so upset about. I don't know where this. the hell he's going, man. And I feel so bad for this dude because he goes out. He gets bitten by ticks. He starts to hallucinate. And I will tell you one thing. And I, I said this while me and Hanto watched the movie. Um, so like these ticks, when they bite you, you hallucinate. Yeah. yeah. And they could have done so much more cooler stuff where oh, it was kind of like. Yeah. They were like Freddy's nightmares type thing where it's like. They're in a dream. The coolest one they do is they do it with the uh, the hillbilly kind of drunk or the hillbilly um, weed farmer. Yeah. Who like sees the cop shooting at him and it's like yeah. the zombie version of the cop. That's yeah. the coolest hallucination. Yeah. Yeah. And it, everything you do with it is cool. I just wish they would have taken it further. Yes. That's it. I yeah. just wish they would have gone a little bit extra. It's a super, it's a super rad concept yeah. of like the hallucination. As in uh, like a level of nightmare. Yes. Yes. That this movie needed. Yeah. Yes. Um, Alfonso ends up getting shot at by these farmers. He actually gets shot by yeah. the farmer. Yes. Um, he ends up taking a steroid so he can kind of like feel no pain i guess is what he's doing yeah he's using it as like I a yeah, yeah, exactly. painkiller he shows back up to the camp and he ends up dying and it's this like really emotional scene and i think we're kind of at the end here where it's like the attack on the cabin because and i'm not trying to skip to the end i just want to get to this part because i really want to talk about yeah. it yeah uh but all these ticks start showing up the farmers show well, up yeah sorry you gotta bring it up that the fact that like the why the reason why the ticks are showing up is because the uh 
there's a forest fire and the fire yes. spreads yes. Oh, and yes. all the yes. ticks are trying to flee the fire. Yes. So Which is like, like a, on their way to the it cabin. It is actually a good setup of why sure. an assault yeah. on this cabin, yeah. basically. There's some good setups in this movie and like the effects mm. are really good and I'm like legitimately creeped out. I laughed at a few moments. Yeah. But like, I'm creeped out They're ridiculous. The I mean, yeah. the ticks like scurrying like, yeah. you know, and it's actually like really good effects of like yeah. seeing them screwing around for a million yeah. dollars this is pretty solid yeah. yeah they do a really good job yeah. with it yeah i definitely got the creeps watching it yeah um so then like the two farmers try to like invade the home one of them ends up dying one like drives the car into the uh, one of them hallucinates and drives the car he into he, the other farmer into the house yeah, yeah. So he, cabin. the 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 boss guy or whatever yeah basically kind of holds i think holds him at gunpoint pretty him, much like, yeah. you gotta drive this car and blah 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 yeah and then meanwhile, he runs, gets, I think, gets bitten by the ticks and then ends up driving towards uh, the cabin at the guy, his boss, yes. because he thinks he's Rance Howard, uh, which is the sheriff. That OK, they murdered. Okay. Yeah. And it's kind of like a, it's kind of like an un, uh, what you want to call it, like unfulfilling. Death. Yeah. Like, sure. I feel like the uh, the main boss guy who shot Alfonso. Yes. Like he should have had like a part you know like uh, a Shaun of the dead death where yeah gets, i don't like, even remember him he gets ripped apart by, by ticks or something yeah, how does he yeah. die again he gets hit by the car yeah because that his is? buddy yeah. drives to the car yeah no i literally think that's I it, thought it was oh something else. no he gets hit by the car he somehow survives and then i think he gets killed by the the upcoming the big steroid tick. Yeah. so okay so yeah. he does kind of get that big ending yeah. we're asking yeah. for um but yeah in this scene totally out of left field totally awesome in this movie and this is nuts because they do kind of hint at it with the the dog at least where yeah. it's like twitching but yeah go ahead this is phenomenal because yeah. alfonso's character starts scurrying across the room after he's dead it's nuts you don't know what's happening and then all of a sudden his face split opens and then all of a sudden in like a david cronenberg twist yeah this huge tick forms it's like it's like david cronenberg meets the cockroach from nightmare on Elm street four yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And yeah. all of a sudden this huge tick emerges from alfonso's body it is phenomenal looking yeah this is so cool and i think like what's cool is like the um the way he's like he's like lying on the ground dead and starts like convulsing and he's like sliding across the room up the wall and like yeah he's like sliding around it's like a really cool effect of just like what is i i thought he was alive at first I was like oh cool yeah he survived yeah he's my favorite character and then uh i do have to talk about him dying yes but Go but, ahead, keep yeah. going. I was just gonna say, it just like eventually, like the reveal is like, oh, there's a tick that's burrowed inside of him. And yeah, it's like basically evolving into a, a you know a bigger version, basically. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. I think this is probably the best scene of the entire movie. But what are you gonna say? I man? think it's bullshit that he dies. I agree. I think it's it sucks, and I literally also think nobody else dies. Nobody else dies, and I think it sucks all the energy out of the movie because it's like like a tick, like a tick. Uh, because it's just like he's the one I feel like I care the most about. He's sure. the second and person. He's got the most character development. He's kind of like the second or the first person that Seth Green meets. So yeah. it's like, yeah, there's definitely a it should have been a buddy movie. It yeah, been a I agree. Movie. Yeah, I wholeheartedly agree. And like, don't be wrong, I think some of these uh teenagers should like, bite kill it. The, the two uh the couple the couple kill yeah the couple i'm yeah. surprised the couple didn't die yeah, yeah. it's kind of bizarre. Like I, I was, I was yeah. trying to peg it at the beginning of the movie. I was like, who's gonna live? I was like, yeah. definitely Seth Rogen. Green, the daughter, oh, Seth Rogen. Green, <laughs> the, oh, Seth Green, the daughter, and the quiet girl. I was yeah. like, for sure, those three, and maybe the daughter might die, but the quiet yeah. girl for sure is gonna live. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I was very surprised by the end of the movie that like all of them live, including the ca- the chaperones, except for Alfonso. Yeah. And I was like, that's kind of lame. Yeah, like, I, how come was, he's the only one that gets it? Yeah, what, I was totally unexpected. Like, what lesson is supposed to be learned here at the right, end of this? Right. Like. Um, but yeah, so they fight off the rest of the ticks. They fight off the giant uh, tick. Yeah. Do they ever kill it? They kill it, right? Yes. Yeah. I think they kill the giant tick, don't they? Matt, you watched it more recently than we did. Yeah, they blew we, up the yeah. house. Yeah, that's what I thought. We yeah. were supposed, we mentioned we were supposed to watch it with Matt, but scheduling conflicts, we did not watch yes. it again. Yeah, they um, hung out without me and didn't tell me. And then they, and then all of a sudden I saw their letterbox ratings the next morning. I was like, oh, they watched ticks last night. Oh, oh what a bunch of ticks. <laughs> cue, cue that aw track by the audience. Those tick heads. <laughs> um, but yeah, so they all escaped from this house. Um, it's so odd because they all escape into this car. Yeah. And they're all waiting for Seth Green to jump out of the car to drive the car. Yeah. 
I this drove me nuts. Yeah, yeah. Because at one point, oh, he, dude, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's, he gets. He, <laughs> I was he watching. Dry, like they drive the car to the house. He gets up on the house and they're like, "Throw me the torch!" And they throw him the torch. He blows up the big tick and he saves. And the then he's guy. like, he's like, let's get out of here. And he gets in the car and it's like, it must be like a bad cut or something. Hey, dude, because immediately it's, it, cuts, dude, yeah. it cuts to him dude, in the driver's dude, seat dude, and they're off. Dude, and this yeah. is literally like one of the worst editing things yeah. I've <laughs> ever seen in a movie. I didn't have seen it. I was he, like, what? He's driving. It shows him? him landing on the roof and then it hard cuts and he's like, all right, guys, let's go. And yeah. he drives away. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> what? It is. Um, and then it cuts to them and they get to the city Everything's okay. And let's be oh, really quick. Oh, yeah, what you got? And if anybody's going to be driving the car, shouldn't it be the blonde that drives a BMW? Yeah. Because she's the only one who has her license to drive. That would have been a good tie-in for like the characters. And yeah. Have, yeah. Have Everybody these, else had to get dropped off. And literally have these characters doing anything else because like they're they're nothing characters. Yeah, they're yeah. nothing characters, yeah. unfortunately. Um, yeah, they get back to the city. Everything's okay. And then we cut to underneath the car and there's one more tick that's in the city now. Yeah. But unfortunately, we don't get a ticks too. But you know what? It ain't going to survive because it's in the city. Why you know, that? It needs Why that wilderness, man. It needs his... Uh, it, it's like, going to get a job now. It's going to get... It's got to <laughs> well, pay okay, rent. And, it's in a junkyard. And it's got to like breed. And it's got to like yeah. drink blood in that. But it's like a junkyard. I can't imagine a lot yeah. of people being in a junkyard for that thing to survive. But like ticks survive out in the woods because they hang on grass sure. blades. Attach themselves to deer, drink deer blood. Look, and then, look, look, yeah. okay. look, this thing is an egg. It's about to hatch. There's a junkyard dog. Latches on the oh, dog. shit. And then spreads that way. I was going to oh, say the dog okay. thing. I thought that there's, they al- there's yeah. always a junkyard. They should have brought up a dog at the end there. Yeah. Or, yeah. They should have like, like a dog like, sniffing, like sniffing around. It, yes. But yeah. they should have what they should have ended on is because they knew they're not going to get a sequel. They should just have the dog sniffing it and then just takes a piss on the. the oh, and then yeah. That's the end. And then it kills it. It's good. Yeah. It's good. So um, that's uh, <laughs> that's Ticks. 1993 has a 71% on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, if I had to compare it to Girlfriend from Hell, I would say I enjoyed Girlfriend from Hell more. Um, I like the comedy aspect of that movie better. But this movie is much better than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Ticks yes. is pretty solid. I, um, wa- yeah, I would sorry. give Ticks. No, you're fine. I would give Ticks. Um, I'll put it at a 50%. Um, I think the rewatch value is there. Uh, actually, I really want to see it in 4K because the uh, the version we watched on uh, streaming was very OK. Oh, yeah. When it would go dark, like when yeah. they, like the lighting, like everybody would be like basically silhouettes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And especially with that Alfonso scene, like I want to see that in 4K and really see it pop. Yeah. Um, this movie definitely has rewatch value for me. Um, much better than I thought it was going to be. Um, I would say a strong 50%. Matt? Yeah. 60%, man. I think I, I watched this by myself. I really enjoyed watching it. Yeah, uh, I didn't think it was like we've watched like tasky movies on the oh, show. Oh, we sure. sure have. This movie was a lot of fun. I wish we would have watched it as a group because, man, I geeked out so many times by myself. Really? Yeah. I wish yeah. we would watched it, yeah. too. We should have. Yeah, uh, but it was a lot of fun. I highly recommend it. Yeah. OK. Hanto? I think mirroring uh, 60 percent. OK. Good. Good time watching with Chris. And uh, yeah, I think it's just like a kind of just a fun kind of like monster yeah. movie. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That it's hard. I feel like it's a hard thing to do in this genre. Agreed. And uh, yeah, I think they just had fun with the effects. I wish there was a little bit better uh, character development for some sure. of the people. And some of them are just kind of, they should have been meets the grinder, but they weren't. Yeah. They somehow made it through this movie. But I think Alfonso Rivera absolutely kills it in this movie. He is awesome. Seeing the, he's the stand the, up. Yes. The, you know, the contrast from Fresh Prince to this is mm. awesome. Yeah. Seth Green. Totally fine. But yeah, I think it's a yeah. fun time. I can we agree that the standout in this is Alfonso out of oh, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, but yeah, that's what's so great about it. It's like unexpected character de- development from his character. Unexpected quality of this movie. This movie looks a lot better than I thought it would. Yeah. Unexpected uh, visual effects better than I thought they would be. Um, yeah, I think all around this is, you know, it's weird. I give it a 50% and I really enjoyed it. Like, you would think 50% means oh, you don't yeah. enjoy it. I was going to say 50 because you're like, I don't know if it's good or bad, but I said 60 because it's like, oh, it's definitely. I had and it's more on the good side. Yeah. Okay, you know what? I will jump by. Okay, that's a really good point. Yeah. I'll go to 60 then. I will do 60s all around because yeah. you're right. I think 50 is like, I don't know. Yeah. 60 means you did like it. Yeah. Okay, so I'll go with 60 on that. So 60% is all around. That was Matt's pick. Ticks from 1993. Honto is going to finish out our halfway to Halloween Vinegar Syndrome Month with 
What do you got? The Laughing Dead. A oh movie boy. I know nothing about. Crazy movie. 1989. <laughs> laughing Dead. I cannot wait to watch this with you guys. I am Me excited. and Hot just watched it. Yeah. It must what? have been like in the fall time or something. Yeah, we watched it around Halloween, I think. Yeah. Because we were so. watching a bunch of stupid movies around Halloween. We were like, Yeah. We were like, we were looking for like goofy, uh, I don't know, weird oddball horror movies well, that are like, yeah, we, we can laugh we had at. Like a, and we have like a watching. reserve list of stuff, just random times we looked up on IMDb, and this was one of them, and this is the one that we found first. Yeah. So we were like, oh, let's give it a try. We watched it on YouTube. Yeah, it was a YouTube movie. And but now I have it on Blu ray. Yeah. Things are different. Yeah. From I know nothing. All I've been told about this movie is that the first 40 minutes play out like a regular movie and then it goes bonkers. That's all I know about this yep. movie. Don't read anything so about I'm it. I'm not going to read anything about it. Yeah, it's a I I'm, didn't expect I, it to go as I, weird I, as I'm, it does. I'm really like, excited okay. to revisit this because of like, I think we need to, this is good. We're going to have fun. With this. Okay. Yeah, it's a fun <laughs> is this, is this, a, is this a, an 80s flick? 90s. 89. Is it 89? Is it 90? Yeah. Oh, okay. man, that's close. I, I don't even remember who's in this movie. I don't think there's really anybody uh, in this movie. I don't. Yeah, okay. yeah, I'm very right. excited. Okay, yes, cool. I'm excited to watch this. <laughs> um, so that'll uh, wrap up Halfway to Halloween at Vinegar Syndrome Month. And then we have a few more months planned, and then we're going to take a break in the middle of summer. Um, so we're still trying to figure out all those details. But if you have any requests or any comments, reviews, anything whatsoever, if you want to reach out, you can hit us on Facebook. You can message us on Instagram. And you can email us at cinemacoolpodcast at gmail.com. Or you can leave us a message at anchor.fm. And as always, we love doing this. We hope you love listening to it. I'm Chris. I'm Matt. And I'm Honto. And we'll see you next time.